come into this corner right here. Oh, I did not expect that. Hi, people of the interwebs. It's your favorite Abana Warehouse, Sarah here with another car review. And today I have this. To many of you, it is an appliance with wheels. But it's a special review because this is the 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. And I wanted to do this review because in the past, Mitsubishi has made some phenomenal sports cars and rally cars. And I desperately want to see Mitsubishi make a return in America. And this right here is how they're going to do it by making what sells in America, appliances with wheels. I gotta give Mitsubishi a lot of credit in the styling department because of the fact that their vehicles are unmistakably Mitsubishi. They just have this signature look, especially on the front end, that tells you it's a Mitsubishi. The only thing I wish they would have done is made the emblem in the grill red. Well, personally, I can say I am not a fan of the wheels that come on the Eclipse Cross. I will say Mitsubishi did put a wheel on here that would appeal to the masses by giving it a machined face black 18 inch wheel wrapped in these 225, 55, 18 Bridgestone Acopias. Black wheels with machine face are extremely popular on many crossovers. So they're making sure they're making a vehicle that will sell to the masses. Styling wise, I don't think this is a bad looking crossover. I'm more of a fan of the front end styling than anything. The rear end, I have to say, it shares more styling cues from a Pontiac Aztec than it does the older generations of Mitsubishi Eclipse. I wish they'd offer a rally art version of this with a little bit more aggressive aero, a little bump in power, and some OZ wheels. It would be like the Nismo version of the Juke. I think it would sell pretty well too. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. I feel reading off capacity specs is kind of pointless in a car view because it makes them hard to relate to things in real life. This is slightly more relatable. So I am a Sarah. This is my camera gear case and this is the back of the Eclipse Cross. You can do the math yourself. I don't think I can shut the door, it would squish me. As far as the interior goes, I'm gonna keep the short, sweet, and to the simple and point out what is physically obvious to me from sitting inside this Eclipse Cross. I'm not gonna read off a brochure to all of you. You're capable of doing that on the interwebs yourself. This Eclipse Cross, I feel for the SEL all-wheel drive model being the top tier, starting with just over $28,000, you get quite a bit for your money including some really weird stuff that I've never seen on any other vehicle. Like for instance, the heads up display that is robotic and this little clear shield pops up out of the dash. It's cool and weird. And it also has two individual sunroofs. Yeah. I have my own little sunroof back here. That is awesome. Which again is cool and weird. However, it's still one big piece of glass, but you can open the shade individually in the rear. Well, that's a, what? that's weird. This center armrest folds like kind of high. It's like, it's very odd. The center console will house a fancy penguin. He's dressed up for some reason today. The infotainment system gives you this cute little screen on the top of your dashboard. Definitely not the biggest in class, but it's useful. It does its job. It pairs up with your smartphones and it has this cute little touchpad mouse doodad to control it down here. And on top of that, it's paired to a Rockford Fosgate sound system. It's equipped with a fairly good size Rockford Fosgate thumpy boy back here. I like it. It has a little digital dual zone climate control with a heated steering wheel. It's not the hottest one I've ever felt before, but it does warm up the nine and three grips pretty nicely. It also has heated seats, which the seats in here are pretty soft and comfy. And the bolstering, I can't actually really hate on the bolstering. I mean, it's not a sports car, but it's a comfortable seat in here. It does have rear heated seats though. That's nice. Overall, the interior is a definite step up from Mitsubishi's of the past. There are some cheap materials used in here, but this isn't a high-end luxury vehicle. So I feel you're getting good value for your money. There is fake carbon fiber here and there though, and I'm not a fan of that. It looks like carbon fiber paper. I'm well aware this is a car review, but real quick, I have to ask, what the hell this is in the center of this warehouse. Maybe you guys can help me. What does that even mean? It says chung, 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 all the way around it. It looks like they're doing some kind of a seance burning a piece of 
carpet. What is that? It's like a sheep leg. The gauges on the Eclipse Cross are kind of old school. They actually remind me a little bit of an Evo 10, the way the little screen is in the center. Uh, what is neat though, is you have a control down here for your S A W C and you can change from normal, which is auto to snow to gravel. It's got a little bit of rally heritage, just a little bit. Wow, it lets you rub all the way up to red line. It's very slow to rev though, very slow to rev. Oh, you know beans will be given. It is that time. I'm going to keep it in drive mode. I am not gonna move it over into manual mode because it's a CVT and that actually makes it slower. So I'm going to turn off trash control, okay? And the SAWC, I'll just keep it in auto because there's no dedicated tarmac setting. And uh, yeah, I'll give it a little bit of a preload and see what this thing can do. Ready? Go. Oh, not bad. Didn't hesitate that bad. Go, go. It simulates fake shifts, but not that big of a step. It's got a bean. There is so much room under here. Oh, that's cool. All the radiator is kind of hidden in a little duct. Oh, that's cool. It's got a factory strut tower brace. Hello, and welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. This 2020 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross is not powered by a 4G63 or a 4B11T, unfortunately. But there's enough room under here where I bet you could stuff the drivetrain from an Evo in this thing. I bet you you could. I'd like to see someone do it. It'd be interesting. The Eclipse Cross is, however, powered by a 4B40 TC all aluminum 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder that produces 152 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 184 pound feet of torque from 2,000 to 3,500 RPM. It's a nice meaty mid portion of the power band. It is a bit of a letdown that this is offered with a 2.2 liter turbo diesel in other countries. America doesn't get it. It's kind of a bummer. I don't know what happened between Mitsubishi and America because I, I never thought Mitsubishi made crap products. I like their vehicles and they still offer some pretty decent products in other countries. We just don't get them here. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me? Ready? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, that was scary. It definitely stops quickly. Better brakes than I thought they would be. It kind of hopped around a little bit though under braking. Pretty gnarly brakes though. Hello, I'm back. The drivetrain front of this Eclipse Cross is a CBT with eight simulated gears. So it kind of ruins the slingshot engage mode. And what stings even more is there is a six-speed manual available, just not in America. It does have SAWC though, super all-wheel control. It's all-wheel drive, a little bit of rally heritage incorporated in it. And it's a taste of what Mitsubishi is capable of doing. Mitsubishi is capable of making some amazing cars. I want to see those in America again. They need to let car enthusiasts run the marketing departments of car companies. That's what they need to do. I'm gonna do a little bit of on and off-road in this review, cause that, that's a crossover. So I gotta test on and off-road capabilities. Keep in mind, this isn't a true off-roader, so I'm not expecting a lot out of it, but we'll see. Let's let it rip. Whoa, all right. Okay, little Eclipse Cross. I did drive the 2019 version of this and uh, I was on a completely different style surface. It was more just sand and dirt. This little thing rips, dude. It doesn't really like aggressive, harsh bumps because I mean, it does have car tires on here, let's be honest. But I do feel like this has a little bit of rally heritage in it. down to this little wash. Yeah, not bad. 
didn't bottom out or anything. So far, so good. So here's the big hill that has challenged some off-road trucks in the past. Let's see how this little crossover with crap tires on it will handle this hill. A few little clips crossed. Don't let me down. It did it! It did it! Struggled a little bit, kind of like power wise. I just felt it in the throttle, kind of like dying out towards the top. Even though I have trash control turned off, it still kind of felt like it was hesitating. But it made it to the top. Time to descend the hill. Now, this does not have any form of hill descent control, so I'm gonna use my foot. The ABS knows I'm going down a hill. That was nice. I didn't think it was gonna do that hill as well as it just did. I'm a little bit surprised. The real question is, can this thing take a corner on tarmac? Well, I guess I'll have to find out. Darn. So if you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I typically have what is called the bean score and the meatball score. And they are a rating system from one to five being the highest of a vehicle's performance on or off road. But for 2020, I am expanding beyond the bean. Sounds like a name of a coffee shop. Anyway, we're gonna be adding the cookie score and the penguin score <laughs> because the cookie score is gonna be an all over assessment of value for what you get for your money with the vehicle and the penguin score is going to be from the heart and whether or not i like this vehicle or i think it's a pass so 2.5 will be right in the middle one being the least five being phenomenal with that said the 2020 mitsubishi eclipse cross is going to get a rating of three cookies and 2.5 Penguins. I think this and the Outlander are important for Mitsubishi to keep selling and selling well because if they keep selling appliances like this, which a bulk of the people out there want to purchase, that means eventually they'll be able to bring back some amazing cars like a 3000 GT or an Evo or the Real Eclipse or a Starion or some serious off-roaders like the Montero or the Pajero. I don't know. Anyway, wishful thinking. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.